Well, we got this piece cut out and it, it I was happy to tell you that it works pretty well. And what I've done is I have traced this the location of this piece onto here. Now that you would think would be enough, but it isn't. You got to be able to positively lock this thing down when you glue it because when you glue it, it'll slide, it'll be I am not exaggerating when I say it's slicker than snot on a doorknob. It will not stay still. That's a black and white fact. You can take that to the bank. So what you have to do is you have to uh, locate this and um, you know, lock it down somehow. And the way I'm going to do that is with the old fashioned method of using pins again. And let's see, I'm trying to get the pins in a place where they won't interfere with anything. You know, I think maybe I'll just do one right about here in the middle and maybe one offset up here somewhere. Might be better to do them on this side. I think I will do them on this side. I'll drive them in on this side and barely leave them protruding on this side since I'm gonna be cutting most of this side away. Simple, but it's complicated. You better think about all those kinds of things as you start to do these things. And, you, then, you, and then after you think you've thought of everything, you have to hope you've thought of everything. And that's kind of where I'm at right now. I hope I've thought of everything. I think I'm gonna drive the first one about right here. And I'll have to get myself something to more firm than that to drive on. These are really tiny pins. In fact, they're so tiny, I'm gonna have to hold it with the pliers because my arthritic fingers can't hold onto this stuff anymore. It's really amazing how hard it is to hold stuff. Now the trick of this is you, you drive it in enough, but only enough, because you could split your wood out. That's all the further I want to go with it. And that's just to make it, uh, you know, leave a little bit of a tip sticking out. And that's, that little, that little point right there is really sharp and really hard and it won't let anything slide. I can tell you that for sure. So we'll drive in another one. And I'm gonna drive it in up here, a little ways away. From the other one and again I better hold it with these because it's hard to hold and you notice I don't put them in line I don't want them in line because if you drove them in line you would very easily split the uh, grain line so you definitely don't want to do that that looks pretty darn good now what I'll do is lay this over here like so Try to locate this back where I had it. That looks pretty darn good to me. And then I'll just take my rubber mallet and tap it. And hopefully it will have made an imprint in these, and it did. So there's two little imprints there. Then I take a drill that's about the size of those nails, and I just go into those holes a little ways. They might be okay the way they are, but it's just better to play it safe and make sure that the holes go in a little bit. And it feels like it locked in there. So we're good there. So now I just want to double check here, make sure this looks good still, and it does. Yep, it does, so we're good there. All right, so the, I'm gonna do one thing at a time. I'm gonna get the glue on this. Let me look at it again just to make sure I didn't screw up. I'm pretty sure it's fine, but I just wanna make sure because you only get one chance. Yeah, we're covered up here. Okay, so might as well get the glue in there. There's no point in messing around. Okay, we'll paint this on, 
get a good coverage on both of them. 100% coverage, I've said it a million times, you don't want any air bubbles, you don't want any gaps, you want 100% coverage. If you get 100% coverage, then you're good. And you don't need a lot of glue, in fact, you don't even want a lot of glue. You just want the least little thin layer like that. That's way better than a whole lot of glue. will fix all those little broken pieces that were in here too so this will fix them where they'll for sure never come out because with the CA glue there's always a chance they could have popped back out or broke or something but now there's really no chance for them to come out they're, they're there for good once I get this located and and uh, stuck back in place so now I just gotta find those nail holes and I think I found them so we'll do one at a time. We'll get this one clamped up and glued up. I'll show you what it looks like with all the clamps on it here in a minute. Well, there you go. It clamped up perfectly. It didn't slide around. It's just as good as it can possibly be. I'm not gonna worry about cleaning up glue, squeeze out and all that on this piece because that'll all be cut and sanded and filed and all that stuff and we'll get rid of it that way. Now I'm debating on do I want to go ahead and just go ahead and put this piece on now. I think I can. I don't see any reason why I should have to wait. I don't know if this piece will slide on me, but uh, it's probably better to not take a chance. The tricky part on this is, uh, you know, you don't want to have the nails exposed. I think I'll drive them in there and, and see how it goes. Okay, that's probably good enough. Definitely don't want to split it. That's probably good enough too. So, I'll just cut these nails off. Now the trick is, can I mark it here and drill it? That's the trick. And I don't know if I can or not. Yeah, maybe so. Let's see. I'm hoping that worked. Yeah, I think that's going to work. I think that's going to work. So let's get the glue on here and get this clamped up. And then all we got left is to carve it back. And the carving part is, you know, pretty straightforward, really. It's not that hard. It's probably easier than all the rest of this. Again, full coverage. This is not the place to skimp on your glue or to get in any kind of hurry. Again, a very thin layer is all I really want. I don't want a heavy, thick layer. There we go, we got them locked in. Now I'll uh, get that clamped up. And I'll show you what that looks like in a minute. I'll temporarily hold it with these clamps, I think. Those clamps might be enough, but I don't think so. I'm, I'm gonna put better clamps on there. I like to be able to really tighten them down. You know, so many people say you're gonna squeeze the glue out. Well, that's exactly what I try to do. Okay, I think I've got the clamps on there as good as they can be done. Uh, everything looks like it's lined up to me. We're going to call that good. We'll give it for sure till tomorrow before we take the clamps off and probably one more day before we would even try to string it up. But realistically, it's going to be several days anyway because I'll have to uh, carve it and... Um, you know, finish it and all those kinds of things. So it might be a week or two before we're ready to play it. It won't take long now. Just as a sanity check, I am putting the straight edge down the back seam here on the mandolin, and I'm just eyeballing down that seam and got it perfect. And now I look at the other end and see if the neck is lined up with that and it sure does look pretty darn close i mean it it might be off you know a sixteenth of an inch if that but that could have been the way they built it to begin with you just never know it's pretty darn close 
close enough nobody should care and uh, that's all we need we're just going to let that glue set now and we'll get started carving it probably tomorrow it's the next morning and i've already begun taking off the clamps kind of excited to see how it looks i'm pretty sure everything's fine We now have a uh, playable mandolin. <laughs> Might be a little hard to play like that, but hey, it's playable. It's uh, strong. Now we gotta see if we can put her back like it used to be. That's the next step. Well, due to the fact that my hands are so sore these days and uh, you know, I could have a bunch of other excuses. I'm going to use the easy way to knock some of this heaviness down and I'm going to take this rotary rasp and I'm going to be very conservative or at least try to be. This thing can really eat your lunch in a hurry. I mean it, it takes a lot off very quickly. So I'm going to be very careful or as careful as I can be about it and uh, I just hope it works. Slow down, don't turn left, dead in the head. The cars are light as lit as we head for the last exit. But I wonder what I'd find if I could drive through your mind. Well, I, you know, I'm pretty sure I could take a lot more off with that. And I might go back to it. But right now, I'm going to slow down. And, uh, you know, because if you... If you go too far, then you're just too far and you can't recover. So uh, I think I'll take a slower approach now and try to uh, remove some of that with a rasp or other process. And we'll see how that goes. Well, this process is much slower, but it's also much more controlled. So you can see there, it's still got a long ways to go, but at least I can control it 100% with this. This uh, rasp is very, very rough, so I have to be careful even with this. I wonder what I'd find if I could drive through your mind. Would the road be rough or pay? Can your love for me be saved? A highway or gravel road? Well, it's a long way to go yet, but I'm tempted to go ahead and start cutting some of this down with the sander. I don't know if I should try to cut some of that down with this tool first. It's probably a good idea, but I don't know. It's it's also risky. It's very risky. I want to see if I can get some kind of a line here. A ballpark of how much wood's got to come off there. So I think I will try the uh, fast way first and just have to be very, very careful. Once again, I'm sure I could take off a lot more. Uh, the question is, am I brave enough? And the answer is no, because like I said, once you go too far, you're too far. You can't recover. So now I think I'm gonna go over to the thickness sander and work up a deal to uh, start taking some of this down. So I thought I'd show you what I'm doing with the machine turned off. I use this piece of plastic as my slide so I don't mess up the peg head. And then I can slide this under here and, you know, sand this off. Keep, keep raising the table and sanding more and more off. So that's what I'm doing. I'll put the guard back in place. And mostly that's a dust collector. That's the reason I need that more than anything. I think of you with each passing sign I see. 
But I wonder what I'd find if I could drive through your mind. I'm going to have to reduce the height of this little knob right here because it's starting to hit this. And I know it's way too high, so I'm just going to go cut that down real quick. Okay, I just flattened it off some. I wonder what I'd find if I could drive through your mind. Would the road be rough or pay? Would you do love for me be safe? Highway and gravel road, either way it's the same old load. But I wonder what I'd find. If I could drive through your mind. Well, I'm going to have to reduce the height of that some more. Um, I'm getting down to the place where I want to be, though, so we're getting close. You can see how it's starting to thin out there. So I'm going to reduce the height of this a bit more, though. I think this will get us where we want to be. I might need to do some more there, but I'm going to stop right there for now. Well, hopefully the footage worked out over there at the sander, and you saw me sanding this all down. And I basically sanded off the finish that was there, which is fine with me because that finish kind of has to go anyway. We'll just have to rework this whole thing. Um, we're still plenty thick. Anyway, we're just working on it here. We'll just have to keep plugging at it. More than likely, I'm going to start switching off to some smaller files and I don't know. This may be too little too little too soon. And it probably is. I'll probably have to keep going with that little heavier file at first. Yeah, even that one's a little light. I'm gonna have to go to a heavier file till I get this cut down. Well, it's a little more playable now, but uh, it's still not uh, great. <laughs> but you could play it now if you had to. This would uh, kind of grab your hand a little bit though. Just takes a lot of time or effort. Well, you can see what I'm doing there. I'm going to do that some more just off camera, and uh, I'll show you as I make a little bit of progress each along the way. I'll show you as I make progress along the way. Well, we're at the spindle sander, and I'm going to try to uh, knock off some of these round edges here and bring them up flush. Even though the light is lit and we're at the last exit, I still wonder what I'd find. Drive through your mind. I wonder what I'd find if I could drive through your mind. Would the road be rough or pay? Would you do love for me be safe? A highway or gravel road? Either way, it's the same old road. But I wonder what I'd find if I could drive through your mind. Well, Craig, frankly, that works, but it burns and it's really not working all that well. So I guess I'm going to go back to hand tools and see what I can do with that. Well, I thought I'd try the trusty Dremel. I use it quite often and uh, I got very good control with it. Watching the leaves fall to the ground Just like my life, they're spinning around The touch of the wind, the clouds rolling on Reminds me of when life was a song well, that's pretty good. It's getting close. You know, we got work to do yet, but we're there. We're getting there. 
So I'm going to do a lot more of that off camera and uh, I'll keep you abreast. I've done quite a bit more work off camera there and you can see we're getting very close but I'm getting a little weary with it. Uh, I will point out one little flaw that I found right there my little metal pin is showing through I didn't think about where I was placing it in terms of sanding this off I really thought we had enough depth there the other one was back in here and it might possibly show up before long too so um, this one I'll probably just have to uh, pull it and fill it you know not much I can do about it but if that's the worst mistake I made well that's not too terribly bad I don't think for considering how much complication there is to doing this. I have done quite a bit more work to this mandolin off camera. I've got it refined a lot. Just all kinds of filing and everything. I've got the neck profile pretty darn good. You can barely, barely feel any difference at all. I just don't have this perfectly smooth yet. It's the only reason you can feel a difference. But as far as the seams and all that, you can't feel the seams. Um, now I'm take, I'm trying to get the edges to match up to the original up in here, and that's more difficult because, well, it just is. It's just hard to do. So I've taken this very small cutter on the Dremel tool, and I'm very delicately using that at that seam. And uh, anyway, it's working for me. Uh, your results may vary. Oh, the song we dance and we sing when life was a song but it's fell down since you were I believe that's just about got it for that area there. Uh, now it's just going to be a little bit more clean up with a file and uh, you know sandpaper and stuff like that. Um, it's pretty darn good. It's really pretty darn good. The sun in the sky has disappeared. It's covered. looking pretty fine right now I'm probably gonna have to leave it there for right now because I need to get out there and work on the wood furnace and uh, clean that out and haul some firewood and different things like that I wish I could just finish this up because that would be very nice but I better get after that other stuff or I'll be hurting yeah I'm really really happy with that job it's turning out great well, it's time to uh, reroute the trench in this so that I can put the truss rod back in it. And I have this set shallower than the original, so this is not going to cut to full depth yet. But let's just see how well it does. Hit my first snag. This is, it's bumping this right here. Uh, this this overlay right here is bumping the base so I'm gonna to have to put something on here to raise the whole thing up a little bit so that the base can clear this okay back up and punt well I have put uh, two rails on here just small rails I ran them through my thickness sander to make sure they're the exact same thickness and now we will run through here and cut this out um, I need to set this deeper because those rails make it uh, you know set higher and I'm just picking a, a, a level there and let's just see, make sure, I just wanna make sure it doesn't touch the bottom and it doesn't. This isn't gonna cut much out, but that's okay. Well, it's a good place to start. Okay, I can take a look at that. Um, 
Uh, I see a little flaw in my plan. I should have had these go that way more because uh, I'm not able to reach into here very good. But I can do most of that with a uh, with the freehand Dremel, so I'm not too worried about that end. It's mostly just to get this end all trenched out correctly. I basically just want to make it uh, the same depth as the rest of it so that I can put new pieces in there to tighten it all up. I believe I've got it set for the final depth here, so here we go. Well, I think that's deep enough. Got a little bit of chisel cleanup going there. I'm not quite, I mean like just within a fraction of a hair, you know, I didn't go quite as deep as the original, but almost, so that's good enough. We're, we'll be fine. I'm gonna freehand cut the rest of this out with this cutter here. And uh, so I gotta get in here and, you know, cut this out. This is kind of tricky. This can be really ugly. Uh, so you gotta be very careful with this. This can grab and then run up the side and ask me how I know that. Well, that's as good as I'm gonna do for right now. And uh, I'll uh, probably have to get in there some chisels and clean it out a little bit better yet and things like that. But we're on the right track. I'm just using the chisel to clean this out and make it a straight off so that the washer can set on this good for the truss rod. And uh, you have to have clearance under this too so that you can get a wrench on the nut or a socket head on the nut or whatever so that uh, you can adjust it. Oh, when life was a song, we dance and we'd sing. Give you an idea of the cavity there, it's looking pretty good. You can see the white wood in there, that's the part that's been replaced. And you can see that mine is much thicker through here now. In my opinion, too, it's also more stylish. I just think it looks nice. And uh, it's out of your way, it's not gonna bother you at all, and yet it makes everything much stronger in that area. A song that's been sung so many times I've been so tired, weathered and died. Okay, I think we're ready that we could put the truss rod back in this though as I've already stated I'm not going to put it back in here like it uh, came out of there it's just too straight okay I can see I'm a little tight up in this area so I have to take it back out of there I was going to take it out anyway but it's just test fitting Okay, I think we're good there now. Now comes the hard part. I'm gonna work on this truss rod because I do not like the way it's made. A straight truss rod just does nothing for me at all. Uh, I know the reason they use straight truss rods, it's not for the mechanical advantage, it's for the inexpensive way to put it in here. It's to, you know, it just, it's just fast, it's cheap, it's easy. That's why they do it this way. It's much harder to do what I'm about ready to do, and that's why they don't do it, because it would take too much time and effort. Well, I'm gonna make my first attempt at trying to bend this properly. And I'm just trying to double check. This is, this is the top of it, the way I remember, so I'm just making sure I'm doing it the way I wanna do it. I believe that's right. Okay, that put a little bend in it, and that's probably about all I need. You can see there's a little bit of a torque to it there. Now I have to bend this middle part, and this is a much heavier rod than I typically use. There you go, so we got a little bit of underbow in there now. 
And then I'm going to grab it about here and put a little bit of a bend, straight bend back in it. That's not much of an underbow, but I believe it'll be enough for our purposes. And see, that goes back in there pretty well, except that I'm not getting this end down in there yet. That might be a problem. See what's hitting first. It's probably hitting at this end down here first. That's not too bad. What I might do is just grind this top of this off. I think that's all it's going to take is just grind the top of this off and we're good to go, I believe. So I think I'm going to go do that. Well, I think that'll do. I got her ground down. Now can I get her back out of there? It might be the harder question. Yep, came right out. No problem. All right, I'm going to clean up this bird edge just a little bit. Under this particular situation, I think all I'm going to do is just put a piece on the top. I don't think I'm going to put anything underneath the bottom back edge back here because it's drilled down in that hole so deep and this is going down in there pretty well. So I'm just going to fill this top. So I think that's all I really need to do. The, the piece that I would put under here would be so minimal it wouldn't even matter right there. I just need to... Uh, Make me a piece of this width and trace this profile on it. Put this in and glue it in place. I've got a little block of wood that's sized pretty well of going down in there and uh, I'm going to call that good enough. Now I'm going to trace this top profile on this. That's probably a little harder than, I, than it should be. Need to get it on something flat here. Awkward. I could have done this, traced this before I cut this off smaller, and that would have been easier, probably. But I didn't. That ought to work. So I'll cut that profile out, and uh, we should be ready to go. Oh, we laughed was a song. We dance and we sing. When life was a song. While this has been setting up, I made a little pin for this hole, this locator hole. Now, it, it did have plastic there, but I just put a little wooden dowel there. And I've tested it for the height, and uh, it, uh, it mashes down and, and tightens up. So that's really good and solid for the locating this bridge back. And I've got the other one that's still attached here that will go in the hole up here. This has been drying about 45 minutes, so it's really good enough that I could go ahead and plane this down and put this bridge on and or put this uh, fingerboard back on and that way I you know I'll be uh, ahead of the ball game tomorrow so I think that's what I'm gonna do let's see if we can plane this down now without giving us any, any trouble it's planing pretty well I just used plain maple on this I didn't use curly maple and of course I could have made it a little bit smaller so I didn't have to plane so much. Oh, but what would be the fun in that? take a uh, single edge razor blade and just make sure it looks pretty darn good to me now I'll just clean off the rest of the fingerboard I think we got it so let's just do a test fit now and see if all the pins line up and all that good stuff and they do works great you can see it's lined up with the body there. 
I don't know how much of that I had in frame. I was zoomed in, so that always messes me up. But I hope I had enough in there you could see what I was doing. But anyway, I got her cleaned up, and uh, I'm going to go ahead and just get that sucker glued down, because that way we can move on tomorrow and get this thing nearly finished tomorrow. It won't, probably can't finish it tomorrow, but we can get it close. Scrape off the back of this, too. I didn't think about that. I don't really feel like I need to put the glue on the other side of this, um, but maybe I will. Just a real thin coating. This will add a little bit of strength to the neck by coating this side of this also. Again, I try for 100% coverage on all these things. It's not quite as important on this, but it's still a good practice. So now we should be able to fall right in those holes. Bingo, pango, we're done. You know, it's lined up, it's perfect. Can't do much better than that. And uh, now we just get the clamps, and I'll show you what it looks like clamped up here in just a minute. Well, there you have it, friends and neighbors. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven clamps on that fretboard and there's glue squeezing out all over and uh, I am just going to let that dry like it is. It won't be hard to clean off, I do not think. Um, that's gonna be it for this evening. Tomorrow we just have some finished work to do. Put in these little pieces that are missing up here. Uh, stain this sucker, put some finish on it. It's pretty much done. Well, another day has dawned on the project and uh, I just spent the last oh, 30 minutes or so cleaning up this neck area back here with the scraper. And I scraped the rest of the finish off the neck. Most of the finish had been removed already anyway. Now I haven't sanded it yet, but I have scraped it as you can see. And anyway, so that'll, that'll help us make it all match as we, you know, put this all finish all back. But right now, I'm gonna turn it over and turn my attention to repairing this area up here. Now this, it, um, this filler piece I put in here is still proud of this, so I'm gonna have to clean this off. I'm gonna have to chop it off down to the threads also. So I got a little bit of work there to do to clean that all up. I think I'll just take a small chisel and see if I can do it with the chisel. This, because this is high here, it's hard to get in there. Um, I can only work from this one side, and I would really like to be able to work from the other side. But we'll figure it out and get it eventually. That feels pretty good. I don't really feel anything there now. I think that'll work. Now I'm gonna clean up this area. There's glue, squeeze out, and things like that. There's a uh, little line here, and I'm just going to cut that line in the filler piece. And then that way it should chip out better. My hope is I can use the same nut that we took off of there. But, I don't know that for sure, it, it may, something may have changed a little bit, you know. Uh, wouldn't think so, but you never know. Be nice if we could use the same one, and it kind of looks like it'll work right now. I'll have to investigate it. Maybe not, it might be a little low. But it's pretty close, so we'll keep that in mind we might be able to make that work right now I'm going to get out the parts to fill in this veneer and hopefully we still have them all I, I'm sure I put them all back in here but things have a way of disappearing as you may know when you're doing these kinds of things the only thing is I want to 
clean out any maybe glue or any junk that's in there that might keep it from matching up. You know, you can undercut the bottom side. The top is what has to match. So, you know, I just making sure that there's nothing there on the bottom to stop me from going in there all the way. And that looks really good. I think I'm just going to CA glue these in place because it's hard to clamp this kind of thing and, you know, I can keep moving this way also. that worked really nice now there's some binding missing and I there is some binding in here hopefully we have the pieces we need for that we'll have to clean those binding slots out clean them out of the glue and just junk that's in there and uh, I'll probably do most of that cleaning off camera I'll just take you know scrapers and things to get in here and try to clean the clean this out and get this binding fitting up as perfect as we can get it to fit it looks, wow, it looks like that one's already going to fit, so may not have to do anything there. But I will scrape out, because there is some old glue and junk. I think rather than the CA glue on this, I'm going to go back to my uh, canopy glue. I like this for gluing plastic binding on. That one there is fitting, so I'm not going to worry about that one right now. I'm going to see if I can get the other side to fit up really good. And if it'll fit up good, we're about home free on this. I think that's going to work. So, I'll just go ahead and get the glue in here. I really like this glue uh, for this type of purpose. It tacks up quickly and it's water cleanup, which I really like. The uh, other glues that you can use for binding, uh, typically they melt your finishes and stuff. So, you know, I mean they work great, but but you you know you can have all kinds of issues with those. So this stuff, I mean you can put it on and you don't have to worry about it getting all over the place and you can clean it up with water and, and it holds like iron I think. In fact on the new bindings I think this holds better than than the old glues do. Keeps sticking to my finger and my finger keeps pulling it out. If it wasn't for that, it would be fine. I'm gonna put a little more glue. Well, I think it's got enough, but I'm gonna put a little more here just in case, because it's stuck to my finger so many times there. All right, I'm gonna get something and wrap that. One of my wonderful viewers provided me with this long rubber band, and that will, I think, be perfect for this delicate job. You know, you can take these things to an extreme, but it's hard to it, go to an extreme when it comes to clamping or tightening down things for glue. Uh, more is generally better. I don't worry about the, the people that say you're going to squeeze all the glue out. I have never, ever gotten close to that. And I always squeeze every joint as tight as I can. And the truth is, and I really believe this is true, I don't remember ever having a glue joint fail that was glued properly. I mean, there's been things that have failed that like where I've tried to uh, glue a bridge on where there was already a bunch of junk there and uh, you know, old finish and stuff and it wouldn't stick that way. But when you clean the surfaces, make, make them mate perfectly and glue and clamp them as tight as you can without, of course, damaging the wood, 
um, then those glue joints generally won't fail. And this is a little different because we're gluing plastic to wood, but this kind of glue is very good. And I'll give that a couple of hours to set up and we should be good to go. While those little parts are drying on the uh, Larravee mandolin, I thought I would turn my attention to making a new truss rod cover. This cover was broken in half. Perhaps you can see where it was broken. I glued it back, but the ends are broken out too. So I thought I'd just make a new one. You know, this was uh, only uh, 84 thousandths thick, something like that. So I think what I'll do is plane this down to about 90 thousandths, and then we'll trace this and cut it out. All right, I've planed this scrap piece of ebony down to 91 thousandths, and uh, this original one was about 84, so we're, what, you know, 7 thousandths higher, uh, which is pretty minimal. A sheet of, uh, two sheets of notebook paper pressed tightly together would be approximately the same thickness. And actually, that's probably a little thicker. I'm going to take my very fine pencil here, mechanical pencil, and trace this outline. I could do this on my laser cutter, but on a one-time thing, it would take longer to set up the laser cutter than it would to just make this. And at least that's what I think right now. If I was really up on my laser cutter and all the software and everything, I could probably do it about as fast, but I'm not up on it. I, you know, I, I use it in spurts, and uh, because of that, I never get to be what I would call an expert on the laser cutter. I'm going to draw in where the holes should be also. So I'll just take that over to the uh, bandsaw and saw out that rough profile. And then before I even do that, I may go ahead and drill these holes. I think I will. In fact, it'll just be easier to hold it and drill it. Well, there's what she looks like roughed out. It's still rough, but uh, we've got to, you know, file these little details into it a little bit and things like that. But uh, we're pretty close. So... For filing that detail, I like to use my little half round file most of the time. We'll pull the camera up as close as we can and we'll show you how we do that. So what I do is just, you know, get me something that's sturdy like this and then I work kind of up and down uh, on these places. And this very first place has got a little bit of a jag right here that's catching my file and everything. So I got to get rid of that. Now I can do it. And what you try to do is file up to the line first, and then, you know, after you get everything up pretty much to the line, then you just keep filing until the line disappears. Just as soon as it disappears, that's when you stop, because that's the exact size of the original. So then I get back and I look at it like this, and I even like to compare it to the original to see if everything looks okay. It's looking pretty good. The original's got a real nice bevel on it, and we don't have any bevel yet, but we'll put that on at the very end. I didn't really check to make sure my holes lined up, but I think they should, so let me just check that real quick. Yep, they look like they line up just fine. So that's good. I've already sanded this down on the thickness or on the uh, spindle sander, so it's just the ends that I really have to clean up. I think that's close enough. So now we're going to uh, put the bevel back into it. And I'm just going to do that by hand because I don't know of any quicker way to do it. Um, I mean, I could do it with a lot of things, but I think just doing it by hand is probably going to be just fine. I might even get the Dremel out and use the little sander. In fact, I think I will because I think that will be the fastest and probably the easiest for me. All right, this can go south pretty quick, so I'm going to take my time with it. That's 
looking pretty good for a rough out. So that's all still kind of rough. Now I need to sand it really smooth and do a little detail sanding and I think it's gonna be just fine. So I think I'm just gonna use 320 for sanding this. That looks pretty good, got all the sanding marks out of it. Now I'm gonna lightly sand the bevel. Well, there she, there she is, looks pretty darn good to me. Just put a little finish on it and we're ready to go. Well, I'm gonna go ahead and spray it. I'm gonna try this stuff out. I haven't ever used this before. Uh, Minwax Polycrylic Crystal Clear Top Coat. Um, I'm just gonna try that on this. I think it'll probably be fine. And if not, I can always sand it right off. It shouldn't be a big deal. I don't consider myself any kind of an expert finisher or anything like that, but Here's how I do it. I just, I, I try to, you know, you don't want to stay right over your thing. You want to go across it and across it. That's typically the best for me, at least. I haven't used this yet, so I'm spraying it over here in a, a other area to get used to it. Well, I don't like how it looks right now, I'll be honest with you. It looks kind of beaded up. This is, I think this is a water-based. Yep, water-based it says right there. So I thought I'd try it to see, and right now I don't like it at all. It's bubbling up. Yeah, well, we'll let that dry and give it a fair chance, but I don't like that much, so more than likely that's gonna come back off. We're getting down to the detail on this Lar Larravee, so I'm gonna take some 600 and try to clean up this peg head. It's kind of in, you know, a, a messed up state right now because of the cracks and things, and I figure 600 would be a good place to start. Uh-oh. May have got a little bit ahead of myself here. It looks like the binding's coming loose a little bit. Well, I'm rushing it. I'm trying to get it done. And I probably shouldn't have done that. We're getting there. It's gonna be fine eventually. There's a big glob of glue right here, so I'm gonna scrape this off because it's not gonna sand very well. And I'm gonna go ahead and pull that off because it didn't stick all that well, and I, I was rushing it, there's no doubt. So I'll just redo it. Was almost good enough but you know I just rushed it that's all I'll just get a little cloth and wrap around that the rubber band works well but I think this cloth works just as good if not better it doesn't have any give to it and it just holds it right in place you can pull it in really tight with this all right, so I'm gonna to have to quit rushing it and give it a few hours to set up, but that should be fine. Well, my friends, I fast forwarded it a little bit and I've got a lot more done on it. I went ahead and stained the neck. I, uh, you know, blackened the, the back of the peg head there and then uh, top coated it. Unfortunately, the top coat cracked and uh, it, I think that's probably because the black paint was enamel and the top coat was lacquer. So I'll probably have to redo all that. But I'm going to go ahead and set it up right now. Uh, mainly I'm going to play it on my shop talk this morning. But I thought it would be nice to go ahead and get it set up and play it and see what the issues are. And then I can fix all that at one time. So I'll put the strings on it and then I'll show you what it sounds like. Well, my friends, that day has come. Mr. Rank Stranger himself, Jeremy Chapman's in the shop, 
and he's uh, going to try out this Laravee mandolin that we've been working so hard on. Well, Jeremy's going to play it for you. Uh, better him than me, so here you go. So guys, I'm sure you saw the, the early crack on there, so this is uh, great to be able to play it again, because it was definitely not usable. <laughs> yeah, this one's great. Well, if I was going to play that, that's how I would play it. <laughs> nice job, Jerry. It's great to be able to hear this again. It was yeah. it was unusable, and we, we debated whether we just throw it away or yeah. bring it to someone like you. That's Did you say you had challenge. taken it to some other places? or We had shown it to a few luthiers, and be, same thing you saw right with that uh, truss rod. Yeah. It was a very thin piece of wood there. And right. I, Without pinning it and figuring out what they were going to do, uh, yeah. they said that they didn't it, think it would there hold. was no meat there. There was nothing. I, it was less than a hundred thousand. It was about a hundred thousandths of an inch thick, which is probably which, why it which broke is there. a tenth of an inch. Yeah. So there w you know, wasn't much there to work with. So that's why I had to, you know, put in the whole big thing and put the blue in there, and you know that gave you some room around your truss rod, and you don't have to worry about it now. Yeah. So yeah, that, we were I, we were debating just kind of hanging it on the wall, tossing yeah. it, but like I said, Larvae. They didn't make many of these, so I wanted yeah. it to be playable again. Yeah. So we I think it's a nice take mandolin. Take a with Jerry, see if you want to take it on. Well, I think it's a nice mandolin, and, and I'm, you know, without sounding cocky, I'm 99% sure it's stronger than it's ever been. I don't yeah, think it'll is. ever break again. Yeah, the, plays, the setup's great on it. Right now, the, it's intonated well, and the action's right about where I would like it. Good. Well, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the series. Thanks, Jerry. You're welcome. Thank <laughs> you.